Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the literal combat ships from the United States Navy. Please remember to like and subscribe. Alright, let's get right into it. Fact 1. Close to shore. The literal combat ships have one primary function, to stay close to shore to provide support for ground forces that's on the battlefields. They're not meant to be out in the deep sea and engage in naval warfare. They're really meant to be providing close to shore combat support. These ships provide a platform for quick engagement with drones, under seawater vehicles, or even other fighting vehicles and small boat teams. These ships are essentially sort of like a mothership, if you will, for small engagements so that they can return to this literal combat ship when they need to recharge or reinforce themselves. The literal combat ship will generally stay close to shore but not too close to the combat zone because it is not meant to be firing tomahawk missiles or other cruise missiles into the area. It's really meant for these small teams and small vehicles or drones to have a way to get out of the combat area into a safe area near the shore. Alright, fact 2. Two class of ships serving at the same time. Another super interesting fact about the literal combat ships from the United States Navy is that there's two different classes of literal combat ships actively serving at the same time. Generally, you have one type of class of ship that replaces another type as a newer modern version. And the older version will generally then be replaced and decommissioned. However, for the literal combat ship, there's actually two variants. For these type of ships, there's two active variants, the independence class and the freedom class. The independence class is more unique. It's a trimaran kind of structure with a hull super skinny in the front. Whereas the freedom class is, looks more like a regular ship with a wider bow. They both have a helicopter or rotary aircraft landing pad in the back for air support. But the front is where the most differences are. However, because they look completely different and because they are two separate classes, doesn't mean one is better than the other. Both type of ships could be exchanged for one another and serve the same exact mission and functionalities. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 3. Water Jet Propulsion. Another interesting part about these literal combat ships, this one is the independence class that you see. They all have water jet propulsion, meaning they don't have a propeller spinning around in the back to propel them. No, they use water jets. They suck in water on high speeds and expel them out at incredible speed and force to propel the ship at a high speed. These ships can travel in excess of over 40 knots. And for good reason, they're designed to move around super fast around the enemy combat zones as well as getting in and out of danger relatively quickly. As I mentioned in the previous sections, these ships are designed to provide close combat support on near shore engagements. And so once they have their small teams return to the literal combat ships, they might need to get out of their harm's way really too quickly. And to do so, they need very good propulsion systems, and that's what they have. This ultra-fast jet propulsion system allows the literal combat ships to get in and out of war zones and in and out of battlefield or conflict zones super fast. Alright, Fact 4. Non-Combat Missions Another versatile functionality of the literal combat ships is the fact that they actually participate in non-combat missions. Even though this is a legitimately United States Navy warship, it doesn't mean it's only used in war or combat. In fact, this ship is designed to support many other non-combat missions around the world. It is incredibly interesting. For example, anti-piracy is one of the important functionalities of the literal combat ships to go against pirates who are trying to hijack cargo ships or other civilian watercraft. Other non-combat uses include, for example, counterterrorism, 
or preventing drug smugglers from using the waterway to smuggle contraband or drugs. They also participate in special operations, logistics, for example, transporting things, homeland, intercept in maritime, surveillance, and reconnaissance. These ships are, have a very wide variety of use, but also, the most importantly, to support combat missions close to shore. All right, let's get into the next and final fact, already undergoing decommissioning. The little combat ships, because its purpose is relatively in between, it's not a full-fledged warship, but at the same time, it's not a small patrol boat either. It's struggling to find its footing in the United States Navy. Ever since its introduction, there has been controversies on how effective these ships are and if they're really meant for the United States Navy in the purpose that they were intended. There are critics of this type of ship not only from Congress but also within the United States Navy. Some admirals believe that this is not a good use of the Navy's resources and they should either develop full-flown, full-fledged warships or nothing else. Literal combat ships really sit in between frigates and destroyers and small patrol boats. And as a result, people don't like the vagueness of their missions. Unfortunately, at the time of this video in 2023, there are already literal combat ships being decommissioned. The first few ones, the flagships, are already being decommissioned and retired. They are not sent to the moth yard just yet, but they are in the reserves. It is incredibly interesting that they're building new ships as we speak and yet retiring ones that really haven't fulfilled its mission duty just yet. Alright, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.